I'm Nate Pace, and this is Racing and Wretched. All right, in this episode of Racing and Wrenching, we get to talk to Guy Cosmo. He's got a lot to get out, so we're gonna go right to the video now. You know, it was really uh, my father that got me involved. My dad was a gearhead. He was uh, buying and selling cars, fixing them up in the garage. And then uh, when I was young, he was racing in uh, SCCA in Emra up in the Northeast. He uh, did some club racing for a couple of years. He drove a Formula Ford, and then he had some G production cars, a Bug-Eyed Sprite, a uh, Spitfire. And uh, I was just enamored with it, you know? Who doesn't love race cars, ripping by? And watched all the races on TV, so uh, he got me started driving go-karts. And it was really a, a hobby that we spent together to just have fun and hang out. It's father-son time. We did it for a number of years. What do you think were some of the steps that helped you turn that passion into a career? Well, you know, there's, uh, there's no one set way that anybody has ever made it from a hobby to a profession in this industry. It's it's different for everybody. Uh, it takes different periods of time. It takes different amounts of support, whether it's moral, financial, or whatever behind you. But um, the the biggest steps for me were to just well not steps, but the, the biggest drive for me was to to keep doing it and keep advancing. So right, the more you drive, the more experience you gain. The more experience you gain, the more potential for success that you have. As soon as you have a little bit of success, that kind of snowballs into having some more success. And you always try to develop some momentum, but you have to develop your experience behind the wheel first. And, you know, you need to drive everything that you can. It's, uh, it is, honestly, which is sad, it's very difficult to achieve, uh, you know, a, a profession in this sport to to get hired by a team and to to get paid to drive race cars it's uh, it's like saying you want to be a rock star and you know if there's a million people that want to play in a band and you know sign a deal with a record label and you're going to be the next biggest thing i mean it's it's one of those things that's really really difficult to pull off so honestly a lot of it for me was just luck being in the right place at the right time um one of the key factors for me was just relationships with people nobody knows what do you want to do unless you tell them? So I would go to races, I would walk around the paddock, I would introduce myself to teams, crew members, drivers, owners, anybody to just kind of find out what they were doing, let them know I was involved in the sport and I wanted a future in it, and I asked for advice. I never asked anybody if I could drive for them unless I knew there was a potential it could actually happen. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, but as a result of them knowing who I am already, them already knowing that I would like to grow and, and advance in the sport and uh, just keeping in touch with people. Uh, to me, relationships are what make anything in life really work. You know, business deals, uh, you know, friendships, anything, it's, it all comes down to how people interact together. And if you don't have money behind you to be able to get yourself in a race car, somebody has to say, hey, I would like you to do that. You better have a heck of a personality behind that talent as well then. <laughs> Right, and it's uh, someone's got to trust that you're you're passionate about it, and that you're really dedicated, and that you you're doing it not really for selfish reasons. I mean, obviously it is because you want to drive the car, but right. that you can be an asset, and you can be helpful, and that you'll be loyal, and that they can trust you. So um, to start over, basically from karting all the way through racing in SCCA, running Formula Fords and Continentals, and then I raced in Star Mazda and Atlantics, and. Um, you know, my family supported me, obviously, financially, through those times. I probably spent my dad's retirement in the process, which I keep telling him when I get a real job, I'll pay him back. So <laughs> I'm working on that process slowly, Dad. But um, after that point, you know, there was no way we could afford to keep racing. So I had to find ways to get in a car where it wasn't going to cost me anything. So I, I managed to... Talk to a lot of people in the paddock, figure out if there was an opportunity to drive anything in any category, any kind of car, where my, you know, young talent and skill level would be of an asset to maybe an underfunded team who typically relied on a gentleman driver that would bring a budget, but maybe didn't have somebody as fast as maybe I would have been, and just tried to help the team. All right, well, I can't bring any money, you don't have to pay me, but I'd like to get in 
maybe help you set up the cars a little bit better, maybe coach some of your drivers, maybe help you guys achieve a better result, which would in the end be better for everybody, including the team, the owner, the other drivers on the team. And uh, you know, you just have to get creative because one day you'll stumble across an opportunity and if you're prepared, you'll advance and you'll, you'll really capitalize on it. So. so be ready and just keep pounding the pavement, keep at it. And uh, eventually, if luck is in your favor, you might get a spot. Got to make friends, you know? Gotta make friends. Okay, so what are our takeaways from Guy's presentation here with us today, huh? We've learned a lot. We've learned drive as many different vehicles as you possibly can. A varied experience is super helpful. And so is technical knowledge. He not only honed his skills behind the wheel, but also knew how to translate what he was feeling in the car back to the technicians and engineers so that they could make the car handle better. Helping other drivers improve, helping them narrow down their lap times. You don't have to be up all the time to people, right? Be nice, be friendly. Building relationships is gonna help you more in this industry as well as any industry than almost anything else you can do. You have to have the skill set when you get there, but having the relationships is gonna put you in the right position to get your shot with a little bit of luck, as he said, because not everybody makes it. And using that information, you might just end up in the right position yourself someday. So be ready when it happens. Train, drive everything you possibly can. We'll go back, you know, schooling, of course. Learn the technical side of it, it always helps. The more you're out there, the more you're driving, the more you learn, the more you can hone and improve your craft. All right, guys, thanks for joining us again here on Racing and Wrenching. When we have our next video ready, we'll pop a link right down here below. And if you have not yet, please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to go ahead and pop a link to the actual playlist. So you can play through all the videos. I'm going to put that right here. All right, thanks for joining us. See you again next time.